mean, we wanted to bowl first anyway. Um, yeah. So we weren't unhappy that we were in the field. So we knew that we had a good chasing team and we knew that whatever Essex would get, we'd be back ourselves to get really. But yeah, they got off to a great start and Cookie's obviously a good player. Finds the gap, goes for four. Yeah, I think I think sometimes you just got to take your hats off, haven't you, to, yeah. to the opposition. I thought, you know, Cook played really well. You know, there wasn't, well, when I say there wasn't too many uh, nervous thoughts around, there was obviously, but yeah, it was. Uh, it's a ground that we obviously feel like chasing's a, a massive bonus. Luckily played, he goes to 50 at a canter. Just before Knotts made their breakthrough. Ah! Is there an edge? Yes, yes, yes. We had a good period there where we kept Essex quiet. Um, there were less boundaries there and, and we contained really well and it helps that we had two seamers in the middle there with Broad and, and Pattinson and we've got a good balance of, of, of attack with me and Molly in the middle can, can fit off some overs so yeah we were we were happy at, at this stage. You know and that ball there from Stuart I thought he had a magnificent tournament for us actually and, you know he probably didn't get as many wickets as he would have liked but his economy rate was, was magnificent and it was a massive part of us winning, winning the trophy. Looking like he was going to better his previous one day scoring record Cook suffered disappointment. Goes again, this time a top edge. Reed underneath it won't drop a simple catch. Fresh from his best ever score in Championship cricket just a few days previous, Tender Scarter looked as good as ever in the 50 over format. Oh, what a shot that is. Essex ended the innings on 370 for five. Basically, you've got 45 minutes to have your lunch, dust yourself off and get ready. We knew we had to have a good power play, um, but we also knew that it was, you know, seven and over gets you to 350. You know, we were, we were confident going in, uh, but we also knew that we had to have a good start and, and get some partnerships built. During parts of the year, um, we've had people that have, have stood up in, in important situations and that's been the key to our success really. And we kind of thrive off players playing in sort of situations like that. In a flurry of runs, the visitors race to 50. I think well, there's always obviously going to be nerves throughout the run chase, no matter what situation you get to, because you know you're one game away from Lords. But what we did so well was we stayed in the moment. You know, we backed whoever was out in the middle to to produce the goods and get us over the line. Not at any stage did we feel in any sort of panic. We it was quite calm. Even the dressing was calm when we were batting, and when I walked out, we were still calm at three down. Patel still there. Danger in main for Essex, however. Take one and take fifty. Another impressive knock from Samit Patel. And he found good company in Mullaney, who was destroying the bowling of Harna. You know, we were 180 when I went in with Samit and we just we just had a chat about basically enjoying it and, and building a partnership again and hitting our boundary options when we got the chance. The thing that's documented the whole way through is that we were going to break a world record if, if we did it, or a, a record in, in English domestic cricket. So you don't really think about it when you're out there, but afterwards when you sit back and watch it, it's sort of you sort of realise how special and, and what you've achieved. To be honest, the pressure was really off me because the way Maul played was, was fantastic and I could actually just go along and anchor the whole innings. And it allowed me to just knock and knock and knock um, and it relieved some pressure when Steve was hitting all the boundaries. Nottingham shirt were made to sweat now. Picked out the man in the deep. I think it's carried Ravi Bopara. He's not sure. Picked it up well. But Here it bounced though, couldn't you? Like we no, sort of I, knew I, that it wasn't out. Yeah, I kind of thought I'd get the benefit of the doubt, to be honest. Patel survived and made his opponents pay. Shot finds the gap, four more. Gone big this time. Fetch that from the river. Essex had scored 113 in their last 10 overs and their opponents would need only 82. This was turning into an incredible game. 100 for Summit Patel. Punches the air, that's a fantastic innings. It soon became clear that Knotts were the favourites, and when Mullaney scored his first ever list day 100, the game looked almost secure. What a way to go to a century. Magnificent from Mullaney. Six were needed off the final over. This is the most nervous I got um, at this point going in. Um, I, I think I was hiding in the back of the dressing room because <laughs> I just got out. Chris Reed came in. It was written in the stars for him to, you know, sort of see us home in his last season, but. He, uh, he, made, he made me he was flap, on the deck flap a little bit, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, and then Samit, you know, you sort of pull one over Foster's head and then yeah. nick the next one, we'd have took anything at that point, that's for sure. Edged away past the keeper, that's it. Patel 
steers Nottinghamshire home. They will go to Lords on July the 1st. What a brilliant performance. The highest ever chase in English domestic one day cricket and Nottinghamshire are the winners. It was, it was one of my best things that I've played in one day cricket, that's for sure. Um, and then to, the celebrations afterward were, were fantastic. Obviously when you can look back on your career and you, you highlight moments, that's probably the best game I've ever played in. To get over the line, chasing a record in such a big game with what was you know, the reward at the end of it was, was just something that will live with me for the rest of my life, definitely.